The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the October 18th. Wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We get to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, and more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial in right now, 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, no problem. You can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. And in that subject line, just please put radio show question. Of course, inside the Tiger's Den, well, simply any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday, of course. This is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show right now. The Dow trading up 147 points. It is the Dow, the Russell, and the transports, each leading the way higher, about uh, nearly seven tenths of a percent to the upside. Russell's up, as an example, 10 points, nine points to be exact. The trainers are up 73 points. S&P is relatively flat, up three points. The index 100, totally flat, up 66 pennies. Uh, the semis are flat up a point. Gold is back three bucks. Silver's back three pennies. Lights recruit up 14 cents. Lead the charge here to the upside is Priceline, 23 bucks and change. Then IBM setting up a huge island bottom pattern, Mon. So we'll go take a look at that. You got Canadian Pacific Railways up nine and change. That's nearly 6%. Mercado Libre up a little over 3% or eight bucks. Uh, Baritone Inc. up nearly uh, $8, 25%, 750 there. So we have some movers and some shakers. Shakers being Allergan down 32 buckaroonies, nearly 5%. Chipotle down about 10. That's around 3%. You've got uh, Azimil Holdings, ASML, down nearly 3%, $4.85. Amazon off four bucks, uh, about a half a percent. Domino's Pizza down another 2% today. I want to look at, of course, as you know, what you want to look at. So let's just go right to our first uh, request store out there, and that is uh, Phil. So let me see what Phil's question was. Hi, Steve. Hi, Phil. Tesla, TSLA. Ticker symbol, folks, has earnings coming up on October 25th, so that would be a week from today in the morning. Considering an option trade, and would love to have your thoughts on which is more likely, A to B equals C to the upside to 448 or down to 305. So, Phil, let's take a look at Tesla. A couple different things that we can do out here. We can go take a look at our three time frame charts just to get a feel for what the market profiles are communicating to us. If we take a look at the daily, we start with that. You'll see these blue horizontal lines out here. Now, the top line, which is priced at 356.82, in essence, should be a resistance level. When price clears that, which it has thus far, that tells you on a daily basis you've got a breakout to higher ground. So the daily chart that we're looking at from a TAS market profile perspective says that price wants to run higher. Do I see an A to B equals CD pattern? Yes, perhaps. Probably not the one you're looking at. If I were going to draw one, it would look like this. My A point would be the October 3rd low. My B point looks like it's going to be the October high, and your C point is down here on October 9th. One to one takes you to 371. You were looking at a price point of about 448 out here. Um, there's nothing here to me when I take a look at this daily chart that's going to confirm an A to B equals CD to the upside pattern out here. So yes, looks like prices want to run higher. Is it 371 or 379? Is it 389? 
back to the highs? I don't know. Is it 448? That I don't see in the cards with regard to the data that you and I have as of this moment. Thought I was going to delete that A to B equals C. Can we do that? There we go. If I take a look at the weekly chart out here, weekly chart shows a bearish structured box. What does that mean? That means that once price gets up, if it should get up to 386.99, that is where the sellers are camped out. We say that because the center of the box closer to the top of the box. That says sellers should have control of this price range between 311 and change and 386 and change out there. So will it be able to get to that 448? Look, if it takes out the most recent high about four or five weeks ago, that's the high of uh, 389.61. And it can do it with more than 31 million shares. Then we can start taking a look at A to B equals CD up patterns. I don't see anything to the downside. Now, Price-wise, I don't see the A to B equals CD pattern to the downside that would be in play at all. And on the monthly chart, you've got resistance at 386.99. So our TAS market profiles, Phil, they say higher price to come, but significant resistance at that 386.99. If we just simply take a look at Stevie's other charting tools out here, we'll see that it's price oscillator. Bottom panel has been hanging out at the zero level. You're above zero. You are above Stevie's red line, which is 354.92 because you're at 361.20. This, too, says it wants higher price out there. So so, uh, Phil, uh, best of luck to you, whatever you decide to do. Hopefully that information assists you with your thought process. I don't see any other questions out there. So let's go back to the uh, just the general markets to say, hey, Steve-O, what do you see out here? Now, I mentioned that island bottom pattern inside of IBM. Let me turn off these different market profiles out here. It'll be a little bit clearer for you to see. And what we can see out here is the trading session of July 19. IBM gapped down with about 14 million shares. That was not the end of price moving lower. It did so when it got down to a low out here on August 21st at 139.13. And uh, we just simply have, it's been continuing to grind a bit higher out there. The highest that it has gotten to over the course of the last several weeks was on October 10th when it got up to a price point of 148.95. Now, because of the gap, I'll just put the line on my chart out here. I'm going to try to put a line. See if we can find the yellow horizontal line. Because of the gap that was created at the 150.25 area and the mere fact that price gapped up well above that this morning into 156 and change out here. The actual open was 157.12. Forget about 156 and change. 157.12 out here. That created this big old island. Now, an island bottom pattern, they can form over a period of, in this case here, months, because this one went from July through today, or it could take place over a series of three days. So a minimum of three, maximum, there is no maximum. Now, island patterns are very bullish. In the case of IBM, when you say very bullish, sometimes it can be a uh, significant bottom or a significant top out here. But... That message of bullishness from a trading standpoint, now look, if you were in this, you would not get out of this. You just simply would know that you have some resistance at the next gap, that gap at about 162.64. Uh, and then above that, around 168.98. But IBM has given you a major change in trend signal today. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 156. S&P is up uh, three and a half. Uh, James writes in, says, hi, Steve. Hi, James. Uh, I would like to start a position in uh, Disney, ticker symbols DIS. What do you think? Sent from my iPhone. Well, if we, uh, not my iPhone, but to his iPhone. But his iPhone to my iPhone, which is how we got that. So if we go take a look at uh, Disney, again, ticker symbol here is uh, DIS. Here's the daily, the weekly, and the monthly uh, market profiles out here. And so... Let's, uh, from a daily perspective, you can see you've got a uh, price is inside a bullish structure today so far. It's inside a bullish structure daily box out here. Price can get above 98.64. It should move up to 100.93, bounce up there at this stage of the game. Big, huge, nasty, wide-ranging bar out here from September the 7th. So that's a lot to get through. Volume, there was 26 million shares out here. So what we don't know is, well, here's what we don't. What we don't see is necessarily any kind of volume um, pattern off of the bottom just yet. So we don't know if sellers are totally gone here. The weekly chart uh, has a brand new, uh, started uh, two, three weeks ago, so relatively new, a uh, TAS market profile. It, too, has a bullish structure. 97.34 is the level of support. And uh, 104.22 is a level of resistance. Hasn't been able to break above this week. Been able to break above that uh, center of the box, not in the center, closer to the bottom, 98.49 level. At a minimum, we'd like to see it clear that to give you the potential to get back to 104.22. Buy points, though, I mean, if you really wanted to begin a position, 97.34 is a number, 97.99 to consider. So just write those on a pad of paper because well, we're just spitballing here, right? I'm just, you just sent me the question, so I'm just kind of going through these charts in order to reach a conclusion out here. But we like the daily and we like the weekly profile. We do not like the monthly profile. Price is below that. It's 103.21 out here. And this really suggests to me, to moi, that uh, Disney wants to get down perhaps and test this uh, swing point from February in 2016. Somewhere between 86 and a quarter and 97 bucks out there. So that's what that is showing us. If we come and take a look at, I'm going to stay on the weekly chart. I'm just making the assumption, James, that you're not looking to just trade this. You're looking at Disney as some type of investment out here. So therefore, I'm going to just stick with the weekly time frame. And then this weekly time frame 
chart out here. What we definitely do not, here's one thing we see. We see Stevie's red line. We see that that's priced at 100.15. We can see that that has primarily acted as resistance for many months out here. And in order to get some type of confirmation that the move lower is over, we would see a close above that. Last week, uh, price opened up into Stevie's red line, sold off down into the bottom of that TAS weekly profile. So we, we have this little range. I don't know which one is going to bust out. If it closes above 100.14, then you can say, okay, maybe. But right now you have a falling price oscillator, bottom panel of my screen, below zero, Stevie's red line acting as resistance. Even though we've got these nice, these beautiful TAS profiles, I'm going to say be patient. If we take a look at, because um, this could easily be an A to B, well, it probably is, an A to B equals CD to the downside on a weekly perspective. So your price objectives are, well, the one-to-one, -one, which has been hit, 97.45, but without a bullish reversal candle, 93.81 is wide open, as is 89.18. That's what the A to B equals CD patterns look like. If we do some wave counts to see where we're at, uh, you got down to a letter F or wave number six, uh, Back here, let me get my crosshair out. That was the week that ended September 8th. This says, hey, you know what? No reason for it not to get down to that seventh wave. So I would say at this stage of the game, I think you're too early. That's what the chart patterns. We don't see any real confirmation here inside of uh, Disney. So uh, be patient. Maybe wait into the um, low 90s, 93 or lower out here as price comes back into perhaps October 14th, 2016. And wait for some type of bullish reversal signal and wait for it on the weekly time frame chart if, in fact, you're looking for more of an intermediate term play inside of uh, Disney. So thanks for writing in. Now, we took a look at, well, we took a look at IBM. We talked about that uh, big, huge island bottom. What else is it that we see inside of the markets, inside the liars poker game that is being played out here live as we speak right now? You've got the New York Stock Exchange at a, a new all-time high as we speak. If it closed here, it'd be a new all-time closing high. And yet its advanced decline oscillator reading is below zero. Artie Johnson would say, what would Artie Johnson say? What, what was his famous line out there? Very interesting. This is very interesting for sure. Um, something is not right in the hen house out here. If I take a look at the NASDAQ composite, yeah, the advanced client oscillator has turned up, but we're still below, very yep, but we're still below zero, minus 50 reading. And the Dow, with the beautiful day that it has, that's panel number three that you're looking at, um, earlier in the session, uh, its advanced client oscillator reading was below zero. So something is fishy, you know, and, and there's nothing worse than bad fish. Now, look, I'm not saying the markets are going to create or anything like that, but there's just something that uh, just ain't right in uh, Denmark. And things need to be right in Denmark out here. Now, are we going to see a gap to the downside tomorrow and, uh, see a, uh, uh, and then see an island top? Just like we saw an island bottom inside of IBM, I don't know. That's not what I'm, you know, uh, is it like? Anything can happen. I'm not forecasting it, but it's a possibility that is out there. Uh, it'd be more of a possibility if the spot volatility index tomorrow when you wake up, whatever time that might be, uh, price is trading above 1041 out here. That's really going to be a key number. That's going to be one element to look at. But these charts here, they're just, uh, these are Lee Corso charts. They are saying not so fast out here. This stuff can be resolved, but right now it is just simply saying not so fast. Now, what is it that we are going to go ahead and take a look at to help us answer that question out here? Well, you're just going to have to wait because we've got a caller on the line, and callers have preference. So let's go to uh, Ron in Denver. Ron, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are uh, you today? Sure. Uh, um, Steve, I'm sorry to interrupt your thoughts on there. You're not. But Okay. Uh, well, I, I'm sure you'll cover gold, and I wanted to get your thoughts on gold, but also on a stock with symbol is KN. Okay. Tell us what you're doing, how we can help you. Well, I, I'm looking. I'm, I'm a, I want to get a, probably a... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Ron, can you put a quarter in that uh, that telephone of yours? Uh, because uh, he, he was looking at it, and I don't know 
for what. And if you are listening, Ron, maybe you could call back in. Uh, but it is ticker symbol KN, Knowles Corp, out here. We can take a look at it just to try to get a feel for what it's doing and specifically what it's doing uh, today. So this hopefully will go ahead and assist a run. Now, the swing point that it's trading into is back on October 4th, 766,000 shares. You're 314 as we speak right now. So volume metric seems to be uh, similar. Um, it's not like it's being taken out with wide ranging bar or, uh, a, you know, a, a significant volume increase out here. And price is trading right into resistance, which is 1596. That's the top of its daily box. Ron, sellers should be camped out here right now. I don't know if you're looking to go long, uh, but today would not be the day if you were. Going short? Eh, I don't know about that one either. Plus, it's a $15 equity, and you promised never to short a $15 equity. Steve Rhodes with TFN. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com <laughs> Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's go back uh, kind of to the uh, general markets and what we're uh, paying attention uh, to. Um, you know, we looked at the Lee Corso charts that are just saying not so fast just yet. Um, if there's going to be and, and if I go take a look at uh, this, I'll stop the uh, stutter, the stutter step out here. I'm going to go to the daily index for somebody take a look at the Dow and the S&P 500 and maybe some points of interest out here. Again, I'm only talking about the daily charts uh, in the case of the Dow. 
Uh, you've got a 1 to 1.6, 1 8A to B equals CD to the upside. That is completing at 23,189.26. That's off of the bottom out here that created the Gartley buy pattern. That's the June 29, 2017 um, swing point that I'm using for my A point. So you've got an A to B equals CD to the upside. Um, you can get beyond the 1 to 1.618. Today is going to be a TD sequential 13 count out here. Now, not often. When you get these TD sequential counts, do you see that as being an immediate uh, top out here? At least I can tell you in my studies of the Dow, it has happened a couple of times in the last uh, seven, eight years out here, just a couple of times. Most of the time, it doesn't happen right to the day out there. But that's not really how that pattern is traded anyways. But just a, a point of interest out here with regard to the Dow. Is price going to stop there? I don't know if it is. It can go up to the one to two A to B equals CD, which is 23,564 out here. Now, the move along this, even though we've seen a nice price move, uh, we've seen it really a linear, linear, a linear move along the C to D leg, meaning similar to the uh, angular, if you will, move from the June 29th high to the uh, June 20th low to the August 8th high out here. So it's not as if it's it's been strong in price, don't get me wrong, but it hasn't been really strong forming on the left side of that angle out here. Uh, so you've got potential type of short-term topping pattern inside of the Dow. If we look at the S&P 500, even though its move has been smaller percentage-wise, uh, today is also going to be a TD sequential uh, 13 count out here. Well, it should. I don't know what the end of the day is going to look like, but as we speak right now, it's going to. You've got the uh, 1 to 2 A to B equals CD, which is not that far off. 2572, you're 2563. You're in wave number 7. Price is moving higher, doing less relative energy. These are all signals that you and I have spent a lifetime identifying to help us identify uh, tops and bottoms out here. And uh, you've got Stevie's red line, which is right now priced at 2560 and a bit of change out there. If we, So what's going to be the signal? Well, you know, we're going to wait for the cavalry. We're also going to wait, in this case here, I have spent uh, the last couple of uh, sessions with you, and we've been looking at the 60-minute market breadth for the S&P 500. Wait, we're throwing the 60-minute out the door. It's been just uh, not necessarily reliable. So we'll just simply step it up a notch. Boom, as Emerald would say. I think he would say something like that. And so the notch that we're going to step it up to is the 240-minute time frame. So when we see some type of bearish crossover on the 240-minute time frame, that combined with the other things that we're looking for, then okay. Then at that stage, maybe we've got some type of retracement. We would have some type of retracement. And we'll just have to really pay attention to patterns, support levels, things of that sort. Now, that um, goes in line with me being able to answer the question, which I'll do after we go to a, a caller out here, which is uh, Jim in Palm Harbor. Jim, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing uh, this afternoon? I'm doing great. Good afternoon. How are you? Yes. Good, very good. Thank you for asking. And uh, Jim, you're calling about ticker symbol uh, WBA. Tell us about WBA, what you're doing, and how we can help. That's Walgreens, by the way, folks. Yeah, I was looking at either a trade or medium term, and uh, I noticed Exxon and their investing had sold Exxon and had bought Walgreens. <laughs> so I, do, I was just wondering what you thought about it. And uh, okay, so if we take a look at at Walgreens, um, which has been uh, basically moving down uh, faster than uh, faster than we can say, I don't know. Um, where is it trading into? Is a, a question. So, is this a is this a value play? Tell me what you're looking at here. What's the what's the thought behind it? As I take a try to take a peek at this for you. What are you looking at to to you know to give you the intuition that maybe now is the time to step in on on uh, Walgreens? Um, well, I just looked up. Uh, I researched it a little bit. Starmine had it rated bullish, and uh, like I said, Exxon has been recommending buy it, and uh, just uh, thought that it may have reached its uh, bottom. It might be a good time for a short-term trade or mid. Term trade. I realize well, it could probably drop quite a bit more. Yeah. Um, you know, I always like to say that uh, until you see some type of 
bullish reversal candle at a minimum to assist you. So you've got something to put your back up against the wall. Uh, price just continues lower. A green candle is not necessarily a bullish candle. So you have to, you know, take a look at what your Japanese candlestick sig signals are. Even though this trade slightly higher today, it's doing it without any enthusiasm whatsoever. What I mean by that is your 2.9 million shares. It's not a bullish reversal signal as we take a look at it. Um, and this was coming down with 8.7 million shares just a few days ago. So the word is not getting out that then now is the time to actually step in here. With light volume, if it were moving sideways for a long period of time, meaning probably weeks, and we could say, hey, it looks like this is under accumulation and people are just staying underneath the radar, that might give you your more intermediate term time frame hold, then I'd say, OK, I don't have any kind of pattern here on a daily, on a weekly, on a monthly that uh, puts your back up against the wall to say that this is a good trade. I can't control, you know, what price is going to do. That's for sure. Um, but in looking for some type of pattern or something to give you a reason to go ahead and take a long position, I don't have it. I think with this trading at 67.92, you are better off waiting to see what happens should this come down and explore the week of August 4th. And that low out there that I'd be looking at uh, is um, 57.75. So you're 10 bucks higher today. If it got down to 57 bucks and you waited, would that be okay? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm just kind of looking around to see what uh, isn't through the roof. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, you, you know, so that, that good good thoughts there. Uh, and Walgreens at this stage of the game, it's just not giving us any kind of a buy signal. You know, I'm, I'm trying okay. hard to to look and find it for you. But, you know, when it's not there, it's it's when it's not there, it's not there. And right now, I'd say it's not there. OK, well, all right. I really, really appreciate you. Well, we appreciate you. We'd be, we'd be talking to air if it weren't for uh, guys yeah. like you. So, you know, thanks for listening and, and call back anytime you want. And we'll be happy to take a look at it. Look for some type of sign of strength at a minimum. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. You bet. Bye. You bet. That was Jim in Palm Harbor, and that was uh, Walgreens Boots Alliance. And kind of to segue into what Jim said with everything being up at the highs, because there was a question that came in that just uh, asked by one of our dinners out there and says, uh, Steve, as you see it, why is the Dow Jones Industrial Average not at a phase transition rise? I don't think I ever said that. And as it would happen. This is a strategic. You're going to have to wait and come back for me to actually answer that question when we get back from this break. So we're going to take a look at the Dow. We're going to take a look at uh, maybe several of the indices and where Jim and you and I and everybody else ought to add to positions to get to the long side as things do move higher. Steve Rhodes with TFN Edward. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan 
Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome uh, back, uh, folks. So to try to answer the uh, question, with regard to the uh, Dow and maybe where it's headed to. And there was a question about, you know, is it possible that the Dow was in a, a phase transition out here? A phase transition, in essence, being the quickly summarized where there is a uh, large flow of capital from wherever just simply where capital is moving into a market or markets and just trying to identify uh, the area where there's the um, most amount of concentration. And we can go back and we can take a look at, uh, what I like to do is take a look at a certain area, point in time, uh, where let's say the last significant bottom was formed in the markets. That would be February 2016. And then try to identify the uh, rates of change that we're seeing since that time period. Now, there's a weekly chart that we're looking at. The very bottom panel of my chart right now is for the uh, Dow. And what you can see is since that February, which would be 88 weeks ago, hey, 88, yeah, February 2016. 88 weeks ago, that the uh, Dow has undergone a, a rate of change equal to nearly 45 percent, 44.95. Whereas the S&P 500, that happens to be the one right above it, I'll just put a label on it. Uh, SP, well, I'll just put the SPY because, in essence, that's what I, that's what I had uh, typed in there. That's had a rate of change of uh, 37 percent. So the Dow accelerating since the February 2016 timeframe above that of the um, S&P and catching up to the NDX 100. This is actually the QQQ series ETF. It'd be slightly different because of dividends uh, if I went ahead and used the uh, NDX 100. But in essence, a 52 percent. Uh, if I took a look at this semis out here, let me change that. Give me a second here. So instead of showing the triple out here, let's just put in the... Uh, uh, da, 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 uh, SOX, let's put in the semiconductors, 114% increase. So the thought is, where is the flow or concentration of capital going to? And each of these, it just may be all of the markets. Typically, it's a it's centered around just a couple of uh, markets out here. Uh, you'd have to say that would be the, uh, the semiconductors out here. Now, so I haven't said that. Kind of more the question would be, okay, you know, where is it that price ought to go to? And inside of the Dow, as an example, we'll take a look at the Dow futures since I've got that up on my screen. And what took place yesterday, you know, everybody made a big deal about the 23,000 level. The truth is, the big deal or the price area is really 22,306, wasn't 23,000. If we go ahead and we use our horizontal trading ranges, that's what these red lines are. We're looking at a monthly chart, takes all the data in this case here, going back to the 2002 timeframe, and identifies where the largest number of co-located 
co-located. It means it doesn't matter whether it's an open or a close on a monthly basis. Those are the red dashed lines on my screen between 12, 321 and 10, 324. Once we have that dollar value, all we have to do is add that dollar value to the top and the bottom of those levels to keep adding to them to create our floors out here. And these typically act as resistance points. If you take a look at the 18,312, probably one of the best examples of where resistance was. And these numbers were calculated well before price got up there. And then the bottom of that horizontal trading range being 16,315. Dow equity futures. We're only interested in the body of the candle. We don't care about the extreme emotions that took place during that month. We just want the body of the candle, truly the essence of price. This says, hey, the Dow is headed to the Dow Equity Futures contract, YM, 24303. That doesn't mean there can't be a pit stop along the way, but as long as this price level holds, being 22306, 24303 is in the cards. Can it be more than that? Yeah. In fact, I'm fairly certain it is way more than that because there's really a larger A to B equals CD to the upside that is underway out here. So phase transition or not, let's not get caught up into semantics. Where is the Dow equity futures contract headed to? 27,159 is your one to one A to B equals CD. Is price going to stop there? Heavens to Betsy, no. Not a chance. Not a gosh darn chance. So if it's not headed to 27,159, where is it headed to? It's headed to 30,388 out here. That's the 1 to 1 1.272. Can it be more than that? Yes, 34,497. So when you start reading these Dow 30,000, Dow 40,000 levels out here, just know that there's an A to B equals CD to the upside that is underway. Whereas when Phil was asking about an A to B equals CD to the upside or downside inside of Tesla, our eye couldn't identify one. When we take a look at the Dow Equity Futures contract, yes, YM, we absolutely see an A to B equals CD to the upside. And this move here off of the 2016, actually this is from the August 2015 level, um, it has basically been on a tear, a much stronger tear than from 2009 to the uh, swing point from May of 2015. So in short order, this is saying that these markets are undergoing this flow of capital from wherever it is, and that that should continue and price will go higher. Next step up, though, for the YM, 24,303. Let's go to Rich in uh, Portland, Oregon. Rich, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Good, Steve. Thanks for taking my call. My pleasure. Uh, I, I just got in on your uh, commentary. I was watching you on my iPad. Perfect. And, uh, it sounds like the, the sky's the limit for all the markets, so maybe I'm calling on the wrong issue. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, let's, let's, let's look at what you're looking at, though, because, you know, maybe I'm wrong. So let's take a look at what you're looking at, and let's see what we can figure, which is TMV is the ticker symbol, which is the Treasury um, bond. And are you looking for a long or a shorter? Tell us what you're doing, how it can help. Well, the TMB, TMV is the three times bare 20-year Treasury. Okay. And so I was looking because I was looking to buy it, perhaps, because everyone's saying, and I was I watched Tom and all of you, that interest rates are are going up, especially Larry Pesavento is saying it this morning. Short-term rates, yes, short-term rates are going up. Whether, you know, what's the rates, what are rates going to be like in the 20-year, um, you know, uh, presumably they might inch up as well. But, you know, we're taking a look at, so when we're talking, we're, when, or when, when we're taking a look at what the Fed is going to be doing, right, they're just looking at the Fed funds rate. So it may or may not impact the, the, the longer end of the okay. uh, yield out there. So just something to kind of, you know, to consider. Oh, it's a very important consideration, I think. Yeah. So, but, but still, though, that doesn't mean, you know, if we take a look at what is the 30 year, Treasury bond doing, and you wanted to make a, a trade. Is this a trade? Is it a long term? What, what's what's your thought process here? What are you what are you looking to do? Well, I, I was thinking longer term, and long term could be maybe two days for me. Okay, all right. So if we're looking at a <laughs> two day trade, here's what here's what the thirty year Treasury is doing as I look at it right now. Um, I'm going to get rid of this A to B equals CD out here. 
Right now, what this has going, Rich, is this has a, a price oscillator, which is the difference between two exponential moving averages, 13, I'm sorry, 19 and 39. And that value is below the zero line. Right now, price is testing my little red line out here. I mean, it's right on it. If price closes below that, the message is to go short bonds for your trade. Can you hold on through the break? Sure. We'll try to finish this up in two minutes. We'll go back out to Portland and speak with Rich and try to answer the question, what's the 30-year Treasury doing? Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. If you'd like to be the bank and get the type of interest they receive instead of the low interest rates they give to clients, then I have an investment you may want to take a look at. I'm offering four-year secured first mortgages on billable city lots in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment can be anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000 per billable city lot. The interest paid is 7% per year paid monthly. Depending on the investment, the income per month per lot ranged from $175 for a $30,000 investment to $437.50 for a $75,000 investment. If you are in the CD market, you want to look at this investment. St. Petersburg is located in Pinellas County, which is the densest county in Florida. If you're looking for an investment with your principal intact that pays a good interest rate, this may be for you. The supply is limited, so act now. For more information on these secured first mortgage opportunities, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade Think or Swim is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're on the line with Rich in Portland. And uh, what Rich and I are taking a look at is now the time to go ahead and take a trade uh, in shorting bonds. And Rich wants to use the uh, TMV. So, Rich, the, the first screen, we got to do this in about two minutes before we're off the air here. So the first screen that I'll bring to your attention takes a look at 10-minute uh, bars. And the top portion is gold. The center portion is the 30-year uh, Treasury bond, the December contract. And then the very bottom is the Japanese yen. We're focused on panels two and three. For some reason out here, if you think if you're trading uh, T-bond futures, you're basically trading yen futures as well. Very highly correlated. And and so we can utilize what's going on in the yen to help us understand, you know, what is the 30-year Treasury likely to do. If we take a look at the daily chart here for the yen, you're going to see a nice consolidation, nice sideways consolidation. This tells me as of right now, the right thing to do would be to short the 30-year Treasury. But for how long? 
you'd have to really watch to see what happens with regard to the Japanese yen as it makes its way down into the bottom of this consolidation. It just may be a very choppy market. Knowing that uh, a few days ago, on October 6th, there was a hammer candle that formed inside the yen that has not been taken out out here. So there's going to be, you know, is, is, it, is the reward risk in there for taking the short for the uh, Japanese uh, for the uh, Treasury, probably not. But if you're really just looking at a couple day trade, then okay, I get it. You would be better off shorting the 30-year uh, Treasuries when the yen is coming from the top of the consolidation. Likewise, you'd be better going long the 30-year Treasury when price is coming from the bottom of the consolidation. If this consolidation gets busted. Then we have a measured move equal to that consolidation, whichever way it goes. So in order for your short bond trade to really work out, you need to see the yen bust through this consolidation pattern. And that's probably the best overview that I can give you with regard to what's going on inside the treasuries to really make your decision. Does okay, that help? Steve. Does that help? It does. Thank you very much. Okay, you bet. Sorry we don't have more time, but uh, okay. let's call back tomorrow. I'll be happy to chat about it further. Folks, right. stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear of mine, David White's up next. After that, Tom O'Brien from 3 to 5. I'll be back with you on Terrific Thursday. Take care, folks. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will Will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.